This is Terror House Radio with Matt Forty and Bryden Proctor. Yeah, welcome to a Terror House Radio episode number 25. I'm Matt Forney, your charming and loquacious host, and the founder and editor in chief of Terror House Press. Joining me, as usual, is my co host and producer, the man who's so high on life that he's floating above the clouds, Bryden Proctor. How you doing, Bryden? Terrible, honestly. Fucking terrible. No, you, you took a you took a beating on the stock market uh, uh, this week, right? Hard as fuck. Bad. I'm not good at this at all. <laughs> fucking bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're you're still on the learning stage, right? So you know, it's, and it's not like you put any serious money in there. Yeah, I mean, it's not you know not life ending, but uh, you know. It's it's not good. It's not good. It's money I could have used uh, for you know literally anything else. So it's like, oh, that's that's great. Lesson learned there. Uh, yeah, took a uh, like an idiot. I took a forty one percent loss on uh, this tiny this like shitty company um, called Synergy, and uh, yeah, that was brutal. I mean. Yeah, that's that's the worst that's the worst loss that I've had. Uh and then everything that I'm holding, you know, for a long period of time, I guess it doesn't matter that much, but uh yeah, you be, we need to do the reopen shit. We got to do that cuz uh I mean, it's brutal. I'm I'm just I'm I'm down pretty bad. <laughs> it's not good. Uh the world is closed and it's not reopening. I mean, the there's so much dumb fucking shit happening in the news that there's, you know, uh, we, have, we do have a lot to talk about. But, yeah, then there's Texas and Florida decided to uh, close bars abruptly because of rising COVID cases. You know, even though even though the death rate has been dropping continuously for months, uh, we, we, we got to we gotta feel if it saves one life, if it saves one life. Well, I mean, to be fair, there was uh, an increase in, uh, you know, in the deaths, but that comes back to the whole everything is a COVID-19 case. You know, it's like if you have a heart condition and because I think at this point, if let's look at it from this angle, um, was it uh, CDC said that, uh, you know, uh, there's probably 10 times as many cases as we think in the U.S. Well, that means that you've probably already had it or you do have it, you know, and they've changed their mind. Asymptomatic people can't transfer. For it. the only people that can are pre-symptomatic so again like the flu um you know it's it you probably did have it you know if you're in america you probably did have it at some point and you just didn't notice or you just you know you got sick and you were like fuck that was brutal um but you know it's it, the increase in the cases is fucking odd because cnn runs this article saying that there was uh, no ta- no proof of ties from the riots to increased COVID cases, but they've said the incubation period is two weeks. I don't know what they're saying it is now because that shit always changes because these assholes don't know, you know, snakes from dildos. They don't know fucking anything. And I, Dr. Burks herself was saying we changed. Now we we're telling young people to go out and get tested. They're doing a lot more of the testing now. And they're encouraging young people to go get tested. So you have all these young people out there, you know, uh, burning down Apple stores, you know, packed in, into thousands together. And then you encourage them to go get fucking tested. Well, of course, there's going to be uh, an increase. I don't know how that increase correlates with bars and restaurants and casinos and, you know, any of that shit. Um, maybe, you know, what we should do, just, just like a cool idea, I think. Um, nobody go riot, all right? Nobody go riot until we find a vaccine. Yeah, I mean, the the fundamental absurdity here is that they're talking about lockdowns again after we've had a month of people just going out on the streets and just doing whatever in the name of social justice, pulling down statues, beating people up, not practicing social distancing or wearing masks in those tightly packed protests, uh, and they expect people to suddenly just give a shit about uh, coronavirus again. Uh, no, 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 fuck, fuck no. There should be there should be protests against this. There should be lawsuits against this, um, because it, the, the government's just fucking fucking with us at this point. 
I swear to God, it's like someone someone higher up on the socioeconomic food food, uh, food chain uh, did a conference call with the Texas and Florida governors. It was like the economy is re- recovering too quickly. People are getting jobs back. They're happy. They can go out. Got to close it down again. Got to got to crash the economy until there's nothing left but homeless people and corporations owning everything. Everyone has to be poor and miserable. Fucking maybe. I mean, realistically, I think what it is, because, you know, you never attribute to malice what you can attribute to fucking stupidity, is these people don't know what the fuck they're doing, and it's an election year. You know, the the media is all up the fucking ass of the Democrats, as we, as we know. Um, and all this stuff makes Trump look terrible. So that's at least in the U.S. how they're doing it. I don't know what's going on with the rest of the world. Um, but... Seeing, you know, the, uh, was it Governor Abbott and uh, uh, Governor DeSantis just fold like that is really fucking irritating. And then over here, I thought we elected a Republican with Mike DeWine, but apparently not. Uh, he's talking about, and I'm sure this is coming right around the corner, not doing a statewide making mass mandatory, but in, you know, hot spots. Well, of course, Cincinnati is considered a hot spot. Um, so I'm going to have to wear a fucking mask every time I want to go outside or face fines. I mean, that's just right around the corner. And you've got Biden, uh, who said recently that he would, if elected, he would use federal powers to make you have to wear a mask in public, which means, I mean, you would just be wearing a mask in public everywhere indefinitely. That would just be what we do now. We are still, we'd become a strange nation of mask wearers, which I mean, I guess... A mouth diaper, yeah, which, okay, fine, Let, let's let's do that, but somebody needs to tell me who manufactures all of these fucking masks first, because, you know, if I, if I can't leave the house without a mouth diaper, then I, I, make, the, make the numbers green on my screen, you know, that'd be okay, I'm fine with it, fuck it, you know, make it a law, as long as you just give me a little bit of notice and a heads up on who's making them. I find, I find with wearing masks in certain situations, like, you know, you sent me a news story earlier today about how uh, Delta and other airlines are banning cus- uh, passengers who don't wear masks. I think wearing a mask on an airplane is perfectly sensible because it's a it's a vacuum sealed environment, which is sealed with several hundred other people uh, for hours at a time. Perfect, perfect place for for germs to spread. Uh, uh, a, a good place to wear a mask, you know, like three. Uh, Three of the most serious times uh, I've been I've been seriously sick uh, in my life occurred because I was on long haul flights. We once to the Philippines, once to Hungary, once to uh, Georgia. You know, I'll wear a mask on a plane. Fine. You know that that makes sense. But in wide open areas, like in summer, when people are like out and about, and like flu season has you know ended, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Like you know Kosovo. Uh, recently made wearing masks in public mandatory. Uh, that doesn't make any sense if you're like out in the open. Yeah, what's the point of wearing a mask? This is just—it's hysteria. It's medical dictatorship. It's people. You know, it's a combination of malice, I think, and just uh, people being just utterly scared and terrified, like you said, Brian. Yeah, it's just mass hysteria at this point. Like all of this, you know, woke shit or whatever, where it's like. You know, cops are hunting down black people. It's like, well, that's just not true. But, like, so many people believe it. And, Matt, if you want to wear a mask on, a, on an airplane, I'm never flying on long flights. I don't like flying. But well, feel free to wear a mask. I'm not going to do that shit. And now they're banning alcohol, which means I'm never flying again, because that was the only good part of flying, was you got to get drunk they're on a plane. They're banning alcohol. Yep. No more alcohol on planes. Why? What? What's this? Why? Because the stewardess uh, or steward person, whoever, whatever they're called, flight attendant. That's right. Um, has to take people's orders, and that's uh, too. That's too much talking. All right. So you're not allowed to talk that close. Well, like if that's the case, why do they even have anything else? Like just get rid of in-flight service. That's well, that, the they issue. are. That's the thing. Oh, so there's going to be no more food either. I apparently. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think it was Delta is instead giving, like, a little uh, baggie with, like, pretzels and hand sanitizer in it to all of their passengers. Wow. You know, yeah. post 9-11, didn't seem like they'd be able to make flying any worse. They somehow did it. Yeah, I mean, it's an absolute fucking nightmare. But, hey, maybe people won't do that, 
and then they'll stop at a Denny's um, or an Applebee's. Ding ding, that'd be good. But no, I mean it's an yeah. absolute fucking nightmare. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know how the whole second wave of lockdown shit is gonna go. But it seems like it's just gonna fucking go, you know. And when it people. Looks... Well, it looks like the people, the conspiracy theorists, were like, "Yeah, the second lockdown is coming, you know, and it's going to be permanent." It looks like they were. Looks like they were. It looks like they're going to be right. I mean, it depends on the reaction to this, you know, because if there are, um, you know, more of these anti-lockdown protest things, if those start up, I mean, they're going to be met with like the only thing you're going to be allowed to do, uh, besides sit at home, is go out and protest, which will quickly. You know, if we've seen every, anything over the last month, it will quickly become violent. So it'll say it'll be like, well, you can sit at home uh, or you can go out and punch each other in the street. You know, none of neither one of those things sounds great to me. But I, I don't know. We'll see how the if the anti lockdown people show back up and, and start protesting or not. I mean, if they do, they'll be met with. You know, a bunch of fucking Antifa dumb motherfuckers, which will be funny to see them protest against the lockdown um, when they were just out for a month. So, I mean, it, I don't know. It'll, it'll at least I, I don't expect any of the shit to make sense anymore. I just want to see how, you know, the media uh, decides to, to spin the whole thing, because that's that's really the funniest part. Because it's just any type of you can pay attention for five minutes and you can go, well, wait a second. That seems that doesn't make any sense, you know, like, it's, if we're coming from a place of science and medical science or what, like, it doesn't make any sense. It just, it doesn't add up at fucking all, um, over something that, like, is just simply not that fucking fatal. No, it makes sense that the goal is just to strip of us, strip us of our freedoms, you know, it's like, you know, a large sections of, of the American and world population gave up their freedom of movement months ago. And, you know, when the government takes a freedom, they never give it back. So pretty fucking much, man. It's I, I don't know. I mean, I think the only way like I think the riot stuff is kind of. Uh, coming to a close um you know like the fbi is looking for 15 people right now that uh tried to pull down that andrew jackson statue um you know you've got Chaz has been uh all but broken up at this point um some people aren't leaving but it's you know they're cracking down on that shit after uh what at least two people were shot uh, i've heard more but i'm not sure um, and then now you've got these lawsuits coming in from the businesses who are suing the city of Seattle for, you know, just abandoning them there. And I think you're going to see a whole lot more of that people who, you know, because the police stood down in you know, all of all of these cities. So you're going to see a lot of lawsuits um, come out of that. So there, I should, think... there should be there, there should be lawsuits against the Texas and Florida governments for this new lockdown. The bar should get together and fucking sue. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe that could happen. I, I don't know what, I, I'm not, you know, I, I don't know what ground they could really do that on. Um, but, I mean, if, if the police don't, if the police refuse to respond to your entire area and just let protesters, rioters, looters um, burn everything down and steal all of your shit, um, I think you've got some some ground to to have a lawsuit there i mean they're just there will probably be a uh, quite a bit of lawsuits so that will curb that whole thing i think that's kind of coming to an end and i don't know i don't know i, I don't know how well these lockdown things are going to work if they really try to do another hard one like they did you know in in march uh april then then we'll see because i don't think anybody's really fucking having it yeah i mean the Albanian government has uh, warned they may do another lockdown because cases are rising, even though deaths here are pretty much flatlined. Um, I'm kind of hoping that Balkan corruption will win out over medical dictatorship here because they already started the tourist season. Like they're, they they open the borders, they're allowing people in, they're trying to siphon off uh, uh, tourist money from Greece, which is still closed. Uh, people people are wanting to go to the beach and such. Um, that's all going to go away if they start locking shit down again. Like, you know, what's left of the economy is just going to completely collapse. So 
I'm, I'm hoping the greed of the people in charge here will uh, work to my advantage. It's mostly worked so far. But actually, this is kind of funny. Um, the, the lockdown ended in Albania for probably the stupidest reason imaginable. The government decided that they were going to knock down a historic theater in the middle of Toronto that had been built, uh, you know, during the Italian occupation. It was like a cultural landmark. They knocked it down so they could sell the land to some uh, friend of the prime ministers to uh, develop high rise apartments. Sure. Uh, they decided to they decided to blow it up on a Sunday morning at four in the morning while people were still inside it. Wait, uh, what? And to yeah, yep, and and. Uh, a few hours later, they abruptly lifted all of the corona lockdown measures because they were hoping people would be so happy at being able to leave the house, they wouldn't go out and riot. Holy shit. How many people did they fucking kill? They, it looks like the people who were in it got out. It was like only a handful of people. Uh, they're alleging that the government was deliberately trying to kill them uh, and have you know decided to push forward with a lawsuit. Um, but this, this was a big deal. Like, you know, right at the end of the lockdown, the opposition parties were organizing huge protests against the government over this. Uh, but all that dissipated when the uh, lockdown ended because people just wanted to go out and party. So, you know, the, the government, the government's gamble just kind of worked there. I, dude, I haven't been to a bar in so fucking long and see for me or like to, you know, out to eat or anything like that and see, like, I, honestly, I'm not so sure. I, I I think I've matured so much in in the short amount of time that I uh, I don't know when the fuck I'm gonna go to a bar again because it's like eh, I can just make those drinks at home, you know, um, which is yeah bad. But I mean I doubt many people feel that same way. Uh, but like it's not for me. It's not like yeah I want to get out of lockdown so I can get out of my house and go party. It's dude you're gonna fuck the economy in like irreparable ways uh the millennial generation here in america has been it, uh, undoubtedly just financially fucked repeatedly you know it's it's rough between like the student debt the 2008 recession um this bullshit it's like a lot of people are just just completely fucked for their entire lives i mean we don't know how long this type of thing is really gonna set people back um but i I, 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 I want I want a good economy. I want a good fucking economy. I remember how bad it was in 2008. And this could end up being much, much, much worse, uh, you know, in the, in the long run. I mean, you even have people refusing to go back to work right now for various reasons. Either they're getting that extra $600 a week um, on their unemployment, which is supposed to end next month. Supposed to end next month. Um, it would not surprise me if they extended it. Um, I, I, I always thought that was a crazy idea. It should have just been an extra percentage instead of an extra just flat 600 because th it just shows kind of that the people on the hill really have no idea how the rest of us live. They were like, oh, just an extra $600 a month. That's nothing. What is that, a pair of shoes? And it's like... It's more than some people's entire weekly paycheck. <laughs> like that's what? Okay, an extra six hundred on top of the Okay, crazy. Um you know, I I don't know. But I don't want the fucking economy to be bad. And it annoys me this has been my concern from the beginning. And it annoys me when people seem to not care about that. I'm wondering when we're gonna see, uh, after these riots or ever, if any of the, the right wing people uh, are still like, oh, the virus is fucking real. Um, I, I'm not on Twitter, so I don't know if people have brought that up again, if everybody's over it at this point or what. Um, I, I know the lefties still believe in it, but they also believe you should go riot because racism is the biggest disease in the world or whatever weird fucking academic justification uh, that they had for it. Uh, the people I surround myself with just seem to see that it's all bullshit, but, you know, I don't know. I, I don't think the people I surround myself with are reflective of the general population, so, you know, there's that. I mean, Trump did, they're trying to fucking redo the the COVID thing. Uh, you know, they just had uh, a COVID crisis team, whatever, fucking, you know, Trump and those shitty doctors and stuff all standing around again and Mike Pence and all of that fucking dumb bullshit. Um... Uh, I really don't want another fucking set of lockdowns. I really didn't think that there would be. I'm still not 
totally convinced that there's going to be um, like a whole new wave of fucking lockdowns. I think that it, it really depends on people's reaction to it. Like masks, I think masks are probably just going to be a fucking thing. Um, at, at least for the next year. Yeah, which is dumb bullshit. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll make a decision depending on how much the fine is, whether I'm going to fucking do it or not. Um, but I... Because it doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't make any sense. I'm definitely... I'm not going to go... Unless I'm sick, I'm not going to go get fucking tested for anything. You know, why the fuck would you? It doesn't make any sense. Why would I go out of my way to go do some bullshit unless I'm fucking sick? Well... I'll, I'll probably have to figure out a way to get tested at some point because, like, countries in, in Europe are reopening, but some of them are imposing a, a... You're not allowed to enter if you don't have a negative PCR test issued in the past 48 hours. But, like, at least here I have no way of getting them because the Albanian government has reserved testing for, like, the elderly uh, and people who've been in contact with confirmed cases. So, like, I'm screwed on that front. So, uh, but I don't really care if, like... I'm, I, if I've had it or, like, if I get it, like, I'm probably going to be fine. I'm just going to be sick for a couple of weeks, like, whatever. But yeah. that's that's something I have to keep in mind. I mean, it, it's and it comes down to just uh, your, your personal fucking risk. Like, it's, I, I don't know. A buddy of mine got uh, uh, a fucking COVID test, and uh, it came back as presumptively negative. What? Yeah. He, I know. I was like, presumptively negative. What the? Isn't the test supposed to be like a yes or no? Like it's, it's not that hard. It's a virus. Yeah, it's, it's either uh, in you or it's not. I don't know. He tried to find out about it and was like, "What does that mean? Did you guys run it? Uh, did you run the the PCR?" And then the the woman on the phone was like, "The what?" So yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how how that works. I don't know what presumptively me- negative means. Um, you know, the whole thing just seems like a bunch of fucking bullshit, dude. It doesn't make any fucking sense. None of it. Not a lick of it makes any sense. I wonder how many suicides are going to occur as a result of this insanity. How many have already occurred? Like, have, that, have those statistics been made public? I mean, I had a, I had a, I a, did my own stream a couple, couple days ago where I talked about, uh, there's been like, like something like a dozen suicides in Albania in the past week. Which is a big deal because, you know, it's a country of about three million people. But, like, people are just suddenly killing themselves left and right, uh, probably related to the lockdown and the economic devastation. Yeah. I mean, shit. You know, if you just lose your entire livelihood and then, like, you're pumped not, uh, full of nothing, but, um, hey, yeah, the world is just fucked now. And, like, I, that's that's all I hear from people is, like, the whole world is fucked and... You know, everything's everything's fucked and it doesn't matter. And like, it's like, well, it doesn't matter. Sure. Like not, none of this shit matters. Nothing fucking matters uh, at all. You're just going to die anyway. So, I mean, I can agree with that, but it's not like this shit is not it's I don't want to say it's not real, but like uh, the reaction, the, the virus is not as, as real as people think. The, the overreaction to it is very much fucking real. Um, but I don't think it's going to last forever at all. I mean, this is this time next year, this shit is not going to be going on. Um, there's just no way. There's just absolutely no fucking way that <coughs> worldwide this shit is still going on and, and people aren't, you know, just saying, fuck it, I don't care anymore. I mean, after three months, people were pretty much like, fuck it, I don't care anymore. Yeah, it's like like I I, I watched I watched the degradation like you know here uh, you know we're by like within a month and a half of the lockdown, people would just stop wearing masks. You know they they started you know going out a bit more often in defiance of the rules. Like people have just had it. You know there's still there's still some some minor restrictions. I think when nightclubs are still closed and like bars and restaurants have to you know the wait staff have to wear you know gloves and masks and uh, they also have to offer free hand hand sanitizer to customers at the door, which I don't mind. You know, in fact, having the having those measures around probably improves the uh, the food quality because you don't have to worry about catching food poisoning because your waiter forgot to wash his hands after coming back from the bathroom. Yeah, that's that's not that's not too bad, but 
the, the psycho the long term psychological effects of this like are are not going to be good yeah, with regards to people's you know mental health and just ability to stay sane. Yeah, I mean the world's a crazy place, and it's I eh, I do think people will get over it just in the same way that. I, I don't know, like a month and a half in, people stop, you said people stopped taking all the precautions. And I think a lot of it is because people could tell it was just fucking bullshit, which is why I don't think you can keep it up for a year like this. Not without, you know, strong-armed, like, federal enforcement of shoot, things. Shoot, shooting people in the head if they leave the house without a mask. Right. You know, throwing people in a gulag, things like that. You know, work camps for COVID deniers and shit like that. Unless you're doing that, like, you, I don't think this is a long-term sustainable because even your dumbest person is going to go, well, how come people aren't just, what? Like, how come the guy at the grocery store has not dropped dead yet? You know, why have we, if it was fucking real, why have we not lost every guy who works at a grocery store or a fast food joint? Like, they should all be dead by now. They should all be fucking long dead if... If we it was should, fucking we real. Should, we should we should all at minimum have relatives like who have died of it or have gotten. Right. I, I don't know anyone in my none of no one in my family has, has uh, gotten coronavirus. Uh nobody I know has gotten coronavirus, so it's eh, it's just fucking it's nonsense. I mean none of it adds up, none of it will add up. I mean you can't you can't get it's uh, something odd is going on. I it's more just exploitation of uh something that people fucked up i mean i think when it first popped up um you know the the medical community or whoever it be you know the smart people uh didn't know what the fuck they were dealing with freaked out and then now nobody wants to be made to look like a fucking retard so you kind of have to go along with it because if you just say oh hey sorry we kind of crashed uh the world's economy um we were we are, we are over, overreacted just a little bit then all of those people are uh if they're lucky they're just fired and some of these other countries i don't know what they do to those people eat them or something yeah yeah lovely i, I mean, don't know I'm just pissed. I'm just pissed. You know, it's like, you gotta... We can't do this stupid bullshit. You can't do this fucking dumb lockdown crap again. Um, it it better not... It better not be a whole thing. And and if it is, hopefully people do go out there and, and just do what they did before. I don't like the whole storming the Capitol with gun shit. That's gay and LARPy, but, uh, you know, just defying it, protesting. Don't... don't. Don't fucking look at guns. You look like a bunch of retards. It's terrible. Don't do it with guns. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. You look dumb as hell. Just an excuse to, to, you know, go around with like, I've got body armor. It's like, well, cool. I don't, you know, I doubt you're ever going to need it, but you don't, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're acting crazy. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I am interested to see, though, uh, you know, how this affects the the presidential election here in America. Um, Cause you know, that opinion piece from the Washington post about it's time to rethink presidential debates is fucking hilarious. Uh, yeah, this is good. This is going to be the cover. They, they don't want Trump to go up against Biden because Biden is. He's an idiot. will tear him apart. Well, anyone could really tear, tear Biden apart because he's so fucking uh, deluded and insane and demented. Uh, but this is going to be the cover. It's like, oh, we can't have the debates because uh, uh, someone might get sick. Well, they had that, um, you know, and then like uh, the the whole piece uh, is apparently just kind of like, well, you know, I mean, what good do they really do? Everybody already has made up their minds anyway. They're just kind of like. Uh, you know, uh, stump speeches and all of that. And it's like, well, yeah, they are. They definitely are. Um, but they fight and they have to address each other. And I think, so I've been thinking for a while, if I am in the Biden camp, right, that's my number one issue is we got to figure out how to get this motherfucker out of the debates because we cannot prep him for it. He'll fuck it up. I mean, the guy can't even go on the breakfast club without 
you know, making a complete ass of himself and sounding like a racist heart. So if you get him out of the debates, the, the COVID thing, I don't think that's going to work because it could, you know, you could even just do it via Zoom or they've still had, you know, they'll do it without an audience, anything like that. Um, you know, they, they've got the, they're going to do a virtual rally, which makes perfect sense if you're Biden, because then it's like, you're not going to see any of the protests, anything like that. Uh, it's all very much in their control. Um, it makes perfect sense for the Democrats to do a virtual rally. It makes perfect sense, uh, for them to, to do that. But I think what they'll, they'll do um, is try to have some type of, you know, uh, okay, we'll have debates, but the candidates aren't allowed to address each other. Or we'll just do, uh, you know, Trump will come out and, and do his, uh, you know, town hall thing, and then Biden will do his immediately afterwards to the same virtual audience or what the fuck ever. Because you, can, you cannot have those two engage and not have Biden look like a fucking retard. There's just no way. I mean, it's really their only chance. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering if they'll actually go through it because, uh, well, it, it would at least it would deprive us of a of a source of entertainment because that that fucking watching Trump debate Biden is going to be fucking hilarious. It is. It's just. Gonna, it's. It's going to be great watching Biden just trip over his own tongue every time he opens his mouth. Dude, since 2017, I've been saying I, I, I hope it's Biden and I want to see Trump and Biden debate because then it's just two racist grandpas pretending that they're not racist and saying the other one is. It'll be fucking hilarious. It'll be really fun. Two, two racist senile grandpas. Yeah. I mean, I think Trump's a little more together than uh, than Biden by, you know, a few years. But I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't really blame Trump for too much of what is... Um, going on here sure there should be you know more action things like that but there's not much the guy can do there's really not much the guy can do you can't send in the national guard unless the states want you to to do it and none of them have fucking done it you know none of them have been like it was, well wasn't there uh, a couple of them were like yeah please fucking help us um but you can't just like send in fucking you know the the, the goddamn military and on top of that haven't a lot of these generals been pretty anti-Trump, you know? Uh, may not, you know, I mean, it may not work out. Like, I think that the, the thing that he's doing now is the pretty much his only option, sadly, uh, which is federally prosecute the people that are, uh, you know, fucking, that were fucking shit up in D.C. And hopefully that sends uh, a serious enough message that like, hey, you, you can't do this. But I think the lawsuits coming from uh, company or like uh, businesses in, in cities and stuff will be enough to get mayors and governors um, kind of on board with, hey, we don't want to we don't want to do this. Because I mean, it's it's only almost July, right? We've got several yeah. more months. Something else will pop up. Something else will decide the fucking election. It's not this shit. It's not this. This this. This happened in, in 2015, 2016. It's not this. Something else is around the corner, I'm sure. An alien invasion, perhaps. Nah, we've uh, we've had that for years. I wish you'd finish that wall. That way we'd stop it. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was that was a good one. Um, and then there's and then there's shit like the like the there there was that there was that incident in Seattle a few days ago with that gay black grifter who was mm. uh, stalking that racist uh, Karen. Yeah, that guy's a piece of shit. Has, uh, has that blown up in his face yet, do you know? Uh, not that I'm aware, but it is, it is I'm sure I'm sure you all saw the video. It's like uh, the, you know, this gay black guy driving a smart car. He comes up, uh, he claims this, this fat white woman um, had cut him off in traffic and flipped him off and yelled the N-word at him. And he's, like, filming her trying to, you know, cancel her. He puts her, her license plate up on the Internet. Um, and then it comes out that this dude, uh, like, four, as recently as three years ago, was a Trump supporter. You're fucking losing it, bud. You know what, Ricky? You already lost it. It's gone, bud. Whatever it is, whatever you are gone. He who looks into the abyss realizes that there's nothing looking back at him. 
And the only thing he sees is his own character, Ricky. You understand, bud? The abyss. The shit abyss. It means deep stuff, Ricky. You wouldn't understand. What does it mean then, Randy? Huh? What the fuck does it mean? I understand it. Oh, you do, do you? Mm -hmm. No, you don't. Because it's fucked. Because everything you assholes say, you fucking take from books. Guess what? I don't steal anything from books. You guys can get the fuck out of here. Get the Ricky. fuck out of here. I'm serious. Right off, Ricky. Here, oh, we caught a little animal. Ah. Oh, there's a big fucking animal on the trail park. Fucking just get the fuck out of here. Shit abyss. I'm not as scared of a fucking shit abyss. Ladies, fuck. Yeah, well, I thought you were having a, dis a connection problem. No. Nope. Oh, well, good for them. Well, I, uh, well, I said, uh, well, I said what I had to say. This guy turned, this guy was a, you know, a, a Trump supporter three years ago, and now he's going around with the Twitter yeah. that white people hate. Yeah, I, yeah, which is hilarious. Um, I mean, what's funny is how obvious it is. Like, if anybody would have just scrolled down three tweets, they would have seen that, you know, a month and a half ago, he was trying to do the same shit. Uh, he was actually in a video called the uh, by a, a channel called The Cut, uh, which I've made fun of on, uh, <laughs> on, on my streams before because it's ridiculous and and his actual video i had made fun of because i hated that guy i thought he was completely retarded um it's just absolute fake nonsense the guy's the guy's a nut and i think that that woman was totally justified in freaking out and being scared and shit a stranger followed her home dude like that's you know if, if, if you're just some woman and some stranger follows you home and starts screaming at you yeah you're gonna be freaked out you know uh, well, I mean, I don't find the guy personally very intimidating. He's a gay black guy with a voice like Urkel. But if a woman, uh, I, I can see why a woman would be freaked out by that. Okay, Jeffrey Dahmer didn't seem like an intimidating fucking guy. <laughs> you know, people loved Ted Bundy, all right? Like, it, you know, you don't know what people are fucking capable of, man. Like, come on, you gotta get off of that weird... Fucking, he's a gay black guy. He sounds like Steve Urkel. Yeah, he could be a gay black guy who sounds like Steve Urkel with a, with, you know, a trunk full of zip ties and a fist full of hammers. <laughs> it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Great TV show. They took the Lethal Weapon episodes off of streaming and syndication because apparently, even when retarded people, and the joke is that you have to be a dumb asshole to do blackface. Hey, we still got to get rid of that shit. I mean, it's fucking dumb. Oh, that that doesn't appease anybody but just dumb white liberal kids. It's fucking stupid. Well, I mean, like, The Simpsons announced that they're no longer going to have uh, non-black uh, voice actors voicing black characters. See, uh, what, yeah, wasn't uh, 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 Kirsten Bell and uh, Jennifer Slate both said that, like, they won't do mixed race uh, characters anymore? Because, I mean, th that doesn't make any fucking sense. It, this is... This goes back to, you know, when they were saying, like, uh, the, the internet, I say they, the internet, this Tumblr is whatever you want to call them, uh, that, you know, only, uh, only trans people should play trans characters. And it's like, okay, well, shit, if you want a really realistic depiction of them, uh, go ahead. Let's see how that works. Let's, let's show the world what, you know, uh, trannies look like. And then uh, we'll see if the opinion of them changes. But, it, it does, okay, in Rain Man, do we have to get a fucking retarded guy to play that? Uh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't like the results if, 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 that, if that were the case. Like, I mean, what about like, I am Sam, right? Like, Sean Penn. Sean Penn's doing retard face, alright? He's not allowed to do that. He won awards for that fucking thing. I mean, I didn't really care for the movie, but, like, you know, okay, so only fucking retards can play retards. What's eating Gilbert Grape? Yeah, let's get an actual fucking tard to do it. I'm sure that'll work out great. You know the people that play, you know the people with actual, like, Down Syndrome that are in uh, movies? Because it's like, you know, you can't fake Down Syndrome just, so you, you know, just so from the look of it. I mean, I'm sure you could um, with makeup or something, but, you know, why not? You know those people, they have what's called mosaic Down syndrome. Mosaic Down syndrome is different than like 
full blown fucking down syndrome. Mosaic down syndrome is, uh, you're pretty, I mean, you're, you're still a little lower IQ, but you're better off. You're, you're smarter. You got more wherewithal than, you know, full blown fucking down syndrome guys. Uh, but they still have the look of it. So does that pass or do we need to use full blown total left side of the spectrum down syndrome guys? I mean, it seems like movies would just be way more expensive and way funnier. Or, I don't know, do we... I, and these are the same people that said they wanted a black woman as James Bond. Like, it's just fucking bizarre. It's it's so bizarre that you can't voice a character. It makes less sense than, like, the, uh, uh, than the Apu is fucking uh, accent shit is racist. Which was wrong to begin with. You know, it, it wasn't. But it's like, oh, it was a white guy doing it, and it's a da, 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 thank you, come again. All of that fucking, like, it, that makes more sense than this shit. And that's kind of the point of this, like, fucking woke progressive nonsense, is that it gets so retarded that it makes you look at the stuff they were doing last year and go, that made more sense than this shit. Like, they just beat you over the fucking head with ridiculous crap until they kind of just make you retarded. They're, they're making us all retarded. I don't know. I say well, fuck it. Most. Get retarded trannies to remake Casablanca. That'd be fucking <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> maybe not today. Uh, maybe not tomorrow. But someday for the rest of your life. We're we'll going to we'll go regret it. I'd watch that shit. It'd be fucking amazing. Uh, uh, of all the 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 gin joints in all the bars in all the world, she had to walk into mine. Oh man! I mean, when are they gonna say? When are they gonna say Casablanca is bad because uh, it it has Nazis in it? It's coming. It's coming. The Nazis are the fucking bad guys in the movie. Clearly, obviously, but. Uh, you know, and people are, and people, are, why, why, why doesn't Sam own the bar? Huh? Why, why is he just playing the piano? Like, it's, Jesus they'll, Christ. They'll probably, they'll probably do that shit with movies about Japan first. Like, something like Blood on the Sun will, will get, uh, will get the axe because the Japanese are the villains. You know, because the plot's about, uh, discovering the, the Japanese invasion of China. Does it, does anybody really care about the Japanese? Uh, sort of. Like, I really don't... I I don't think that they do, because, like, China's not... You know, they don't like them. Uh, and people love China for some fucking reason. Yeah, um, gotta, gotta ask some questions about that. Yeah, I don't know. I think... Uh, I don't know. I think Japan might be one of the last ones. I mean, they might just call them fucking, uh, uh might call them racist just because like so many right wing nerds like, uh, anime, but I guess trannies love anime too. Do the trannies and the right wing people watch the same anime? Do you know? I don't watch anime, so they probably do. I would imagine. Why can't they just, you know, just fucking get along over that, over the fact that they're all fucking dweebs. Anime sucks. Yeah, I mean, like, if you like anime, like, whatever, like, whatever, I can't, I can, I can never get anime. No, if you like anime, you're gonna become a girl. That's it. 100%, you're just gonna start wearing dresses. Anime fucking sucks. It leads to pedophilia. Anime's fucking dumb. It's just like, you know, it, it's, I, I, I rarely oh. use the word degen, but it's absolute fucking degen bullshit, you know? Like, well, the thing with anime that always always pissed me off was, like, the cheap animation that isn't even complete. And, like, oh, it's so aesthetic. Like, you know the reason the Japanese did that is because they couldn't afford to pay proper animators? Like, right? You, you do know that. Well, now, I mean, they've got, like, big, you know, high-budget ones and shit like that. And, like, you know, there's, there's a few. Like, Cowboy Bebop's fucking awesome. Um, but it's, like, you know, even a broken clock is right twice a fucking day, man. So, and that, uh, on the anime side, it's Cowboy Bebop and uh, probably Death Note. And then every other fucking thing is, is fucking straight up trash. You know? Like, stuff that, uh, and shit, I'm pretty sure, every, well, Death Note wasn't, but like, Cowboy Bebop was on Adult Swim when I was a kid. Outlaw Star I liked when I was a kid. Um, 
those are yeah i don't know if you got i mean you got like space guns i'm cool with that shit you know got bounty hunter guys in space that's fucking sweet but it doesn't have to be anime god damn it Ooh, excuse me bloody mary burp it's just i yeah ugh. i don't know what the fuck jojo's adventure is it's jojo something i don't know but people love that crap it's fucking stupid we had a, we, anime more like banime, and you go to prison if you fucking watch it. <laughs> you know what's funny too is like the actual Japanese don't even really care for anime that much. Like I like, doubt that. You got all these weeaboo nerds. Nerds are uh, you know? Oh, I'll go to J- Japan and I'll finally be accepted for owning all like my Gundam figurines. Like no, the Japanese will think you're retarded. There's plenty of Japanese people that are into all that nerd shit. They make oh, they are, right? and, they're, and they're just as ostracized there as they are here. So it's kind of like how the Disney people are here? Yeah. Okay, yeah, because there's people with, like, way too much love for Disney, and it's horrible. Yeah, plus, you know, I, I imagine the Japanese feel about it. Like, you know, it's a, it, Japan's a country with an interesting history. They've got all kinds of great writers and stuff like Yukio Mishima and uh, Hirokami and... You know, all this art and music and whatnot. And the thing that people latch on to the most is, like, their most trash cultural What's the, No, hold on. All this art and music. But there's, like, one picture of a guy standing in front of a tsunami, and then the rest of it is like... Why, you never, you never seen The Dream of the Fisherman's Wife? That's some great st- shit right there. I don't know what the hell that is. I, I, I'm sure you've seen it on the internet somewhere. It's the famous wood carving of a woman having sex with octopuses. So they've just always been like that, huh? <laughs> Essentially, yeah. It's, they've just always fucking been that way. Uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, whatever you want to fucking do, I guess. You goddamn nerds, you stay over there. I'm still mad about Pearl Harbor, you motherfuckers. <laughs> they're, they're our friends now. They're, they're, they're our yeah, friends they're not now. my they're fucking be... friend. What do they what do they make over there? They got uh Sony. Um they got uh porn, I guess. They make a lot of that but with the blurs on them. Um well they make uh uh I I think they they make they make Japanese girls over there, which is pretty fucking cool. So thank you for that. But like outside of that, I don't know what the fuck what's the point of them? They got good food, like sushi. Who gives a shit about sushi? That's fucking so 80s, dude. Fuck sushi. Sushi is awesome. Ugh, what's the point? It's just like, here's some fucking rice and fucking, you know, rolled up fish and seaweed. Uh, I don't know. No thanks, dude. No thanks, huh? What, like, you you want me to eat an octopus leg? Or do you want me to stick it up my ass? I'm not sure what you want, because you people are confusing. Fuck them, dude. Octopus is pretty good too. I I had octopus at a restaurant a few days ago. I, I they fucked up my order. I asked for the cuttlefish ink spaghetti, and they gave me like uh, I I didn't recognize it as octopus initially because it was all covered in greens. It was it was pretty good. It was a little salty, but it was pretty good. I've uh, never had cuttlefish. Uh, the cuttlefish ink spaghetti doesn't have cuttlefish in it. It's just cuttlefish ink, oh. and it's got salmon. Cuttlefish Incorporated. Yeah, that's my favorite. It's an Italian restaurant. That's like my favorite item on their menu. Shaka, shaka. Shaka, shaka. Cuttlefish. Shaka, shaka. Shaka, shaka. Cuttlefish. Ink is breaking down in my pasta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did, I did hear about a, like, a good restaurant in Toronto that had sushi, but apparently they're closed because uh, they got driven out of business due to the lockdown. So that sucks. That'll happen. But I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me that there would be a sushi place in Albania. Because, like, I'm pretty sure all they eat, oh, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but Albania is just, like, they eat, like, uh, I don't know, sand towels and camel fat and, uh, you know, yak. Uh, no, that's the Middle East. Uh, Albania is pretty similar to Greece, you know, the Suvlaki and all that. Oh, pizzas, then. Oh, every, every, yeah, pizza. Well, every, every, every place has sushi now. You know, like you, you, you can even get sushi in like you know places like Ukraine and Georgia. I, I, I may get some heat for this, but I think that it's true. Uh, I don't think the Italians invented pizza. I think the Greeks did. Uh, the Italians did steal a lot of uh, their genius from the Greeks. So 
Well, think of it this way, and here's my only evidence backing this up. Every Italian place doesn't serve pizza, but every Greek place does serve pizza. Ah, there we go. That's that's how I came to this conclusion, and I'll bet I'm fucking right. I'll bet if you trace back the origins of pizza, it's Greek and not Italian. It probably is. Well, the Italian places in Europe do serve pizza, but... Not every but, single one of them. Weird. Every single one I've seen. Yeah, there they go, stealing well, shit know, from the it, Greeks. To me, it always seemed weird. To eat. Yeah. It always seemed weird to eat pizza at a restaurant, which is fairly common here. Like, like to me, pizza is something you order, like, to eat at home, like, delivery. Um, I don't want to eat pizza at a restaurant. I want to eat, like, like you know, veal or something. No, see, I miss, like, eating pizza at a restaurant. I can't remember the last time I ate pizza at a restaurant. Like, you go to a pizza joint and just, like, you get some pizza with your bros and just, like, have some beers and eat a pizza. It's... Well, like, I'm, I'm talking, like, you know, like, like a whole pizza. Like, ordering a slice at a restaurant, that's, like, one thing. But, like, no. I've never seen a place here that offers just a slice. You have to get the whole thing. Well, yeah, you eat a whole pizza. You get, like, a friend or two, and then you sit down and eat a whole pizza. Assuming I have friends? Yeah, I mean, you know, the rest of us. That's probably why you don't like eating pizza at restaurants. You know, it's just, like, it's cool. <laughs> You get a pizza, you this get some our, beers. This is, this is an amazing psychological revelation, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's fine. Don't worry, you're never going to go to a restaurant again, so it's, it's okay. I'm going to a restaurant after I finish this. Not know? for long, not for long. They're going to lock you down, man. You never go to a restaurant yeah. again. I, that's the wildest fucking thing, though. Like, I... Like, like dining out is such a fucking important thing to people. Um, that it's just it's kind of something you do. It's like ah fuck, like I don't want to go do anything, do anything. But it's like, you know, I don't know. Let's go eat it. You know, where let's go sit down and eat at this place or whatever. Um, and now it's just like I've I haven't done that for so fucking long. I didn't realize how often I did it. Uh, and you know I. I don't know if I I don't know if I'll ever do that shit again. Like it's like what's the what's the point? Everybody's used to now their uh you know their tamales tasting slightly of fucking styrofoam and being uh you know not piping hot but as warm as it can be as you uh get it, you know, driving home to your fucking shitty place. Yeah, yeah, you know, all all human connection will gradually be severed. We'll all be living alone in capsule hotels. I don't think that's a terrible fucking idea. I mean, you know, if everybody just had to, like, sit in their own place uh, and leave each other alone, you know, it might not be that bad of an idea. You gotta shut down, like, social media first, though. Like, or, or we can segregate the internet by the genders. I think if we do that, it'd be fine. Just like, you know, you're not allowed to talk to the other gender uh, unless it's like you've gone to a tribunal and you're going to uh, wed for the sole purpose of procreation. And, uh, you know, there you go. And then, then, like, the dudes will just have, like, Xbox Live, right? And then the women can have, like, Etsy or whatever the fuck they do. Uh, and then we'll just never interact at all. Um, and the all internet, the, all, all the breeding will take place in sterilized uh, hospital rooms. Yeah, under close observation to make sure you're not having too much fun. Well, I mean, you might. Some people might be having way more fun if it's under close observation. I don't think you can. <laughs> you know, you can't count that out. Uh, but you know, that'd be great. Imagine how good the internet would be if it was just like just the dudes. It's just, like just guys, just just dude Twitter. Um, so it would basically be like the what, the way the internet was before about 2006. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at. It's like, please take me back to when the internet wasn't fucking terrible. Yeah, well, you know that that yeah, really, I, I I fucking I fucking miss the the old days of the internet when when uh, the average moron couldn't log on when there weren't any women around. But, you know, back when you could just like repeatedly drop in bombs and it wasn't racist you were just losing at a game 
you know, or you could go see someone. Yeah. Yeah, now I'd be scared to send that to anybody because it wouldn't be like, oh, fuck, gross. It would be like, thank you. Like, I don't know when all those guys got on the internet, but, uh, yeah, it's a fucking nightmare. I mean, it's like... Yeah, I got, I, I, I got go-see when I was, like, 10. Oh, it's it's terrible the first time it happens to you. That tub girl was, uh, I think, the first one that, that ever got me. was like, oh, no. <laughs> this is so I did, horrible. I did, I did, I did manage to pull it off retroactively about five years ago. I was, uh, I, I, I was with my, I was with my, with my uh, ex at the time, and I just opened it up randomly, and she started shrieking. <laughs> He's got a wedding ring on. I mean, the image is burned in my brain, dude. <laughs> then, then, it, then in rapid succession, I made her look at blue waffle and uh, what was it, uh, spin meat or meat spin? Meat spin, yeah, yeah, yeah. She wasn't. She wasn't even really phased by meat spin. She was just like, huh, "Well, I know what I'm going to be thinking of when I hear that song." Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, that one's. That one's not as bad as as the others. Uh, that was more fucking hilarious, man. I mean, I don't know. This was. I'll bet people are still trying to do the fucking Rick Roll, though. I'm sure of it. Like on Reddit, it's like, eh. yeah. it, it's come full swir- circle to where it's like. I just like that song now. <laughs> like, I just like the song. Oh, well, it's a catchy song. Yeah, I mean it's great. Um, but yeah, I don't know. When anybody says the internet was a mistake, they're full of shit. At uh, letting everybody onto the internet was a mistake, or or people starting the to I- think iPhone was a mistake. Yeah. Yeah, the internet used to be something you'd have to, you know, be sitting in front of your computer to do, and then now it's just everywhere. So now people think it's real life, and that's what's fucking lame. It's like, it's not supposed to be real life. It's just fucking awful. There's no, I mean, there's no win in that one at this point. I mean, once, you know, once... uh the government and corporations and everything were just like, oh, fuck, this is where everything is happening. That's when it, you know, you got to come in and it's outside of the laws of, uh, you know, governmental bodies. Like, if you think about it, you know, there's so many people that their entire fucking human, inter- especially now, their entire interaction with people at all is on Twitter. And they're ruled over by... Twitter, not the U.S. government or wherever their government, you know, wh- whatever their government is, where they are. Um, and that's fucking crazy, dude. Yeah, they just It's yeah, just Twitter. mob rule. It's so... Twitter, it's, Twitter, Twitter certainly has more influence over my life than the local government does. Um, I, why? Eh, because I fucking you know pay attention to it and get my all all my news from it. I don't really care what the government does unless it's something related to lockdown, which they have thankfully not fucked with me on that. Right, but I mean, I mean, like you know, nobody on Twitter can come to your house and shoot you. The government theoretically could. Oh, good point. I don't know why people can't compartmentalize things, man. It makes me fucking nuts. You can't just. Just take a take a thought and keep it there, and you know, you gotta. It, it's because it's not real life, goddamn it. And I hate to be because I'm not one of those like oh cell phone bad type of dudes. Um, although I think I'm getting there. I definitely like leave myself like if I go you know to like talk to Erica or something like that. I leave my fucking cell phone in here because uh, it's like why would I? And it, it's starting to like it'll annoy me. You know, we'll be sitting there doing something or whatever, and it's like she's on her phone. And it's like, oh, you're a fucking terrible person. <laughs> like, fuck you. How's that? Pay attention to me. Pretty much, yeah. It's like, hey, we're having a conversation here, bud. You know. I knew, I knew, a, I knew a married couple that would like almost exclusively talk to each other uh, through Facebook, even when they were sitting in the same room. That's fucking weird. Yeah, like I mean, if I was in here. I'm not going to get in there. I'm not going to stand up and go in there to correct her on some fucking thing. Uh, you know, I was sending her a text. They're like, when I was on Twitter, just fucking respond to a damn tweet. Um, I should I should, cons- I, I should, stipulate that that couple I mentioned is now divorced. 
I am shocked. That is that is just a stunning revelation. Nobody could have ever fucking seen that coming. They seemed like they were so happy. Yeah, uh, she also gave she also gave sole custody of the kids to her husband. So, oof, what a fucking I, I let's just say nice lady, but uh, that goes against what averaging uh, averaging uh, averagely that's not a word happens on average. Yeah, they were they were they were a couple of very good people. That's fucking hilarious, dude. I. I don't know. I mean, I'm a little annoyed with, uh, I think, just every single fucking thing in the world. I'm trying not to care as much about the politics stuff, although I keep thinking I should fucking bring the show back, and I'm just like, it's such an undertaking, and like, why even fucking bother? Like, I, I could I could sit and try to talk sense into people all fucking day, and they're not going to listen, you know? Like, I had this, I had this idea. Um, we should take, like... All of the, you know, uh, the BLM, uh, Antifa, you know, like college kids, right? And then put them in like a, 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 a well, a camp really with the, uh, you know, right wing Trump nationalist uh, 20 year old, you know, college kids. And then everybody who lost their fucking shirt in the stock market but has a gambling addiction still can just bet as they one on one fight on who's going to win. Huh. I think it's not that a terrible idea. It would be entertaining at least. Well, it fixes the economy, right? Because then people will have, you know, money again, some of them. Uh will have some money again. Um yeah, we can do it at like college sports, right? So it's like these kids get paid fucking nothing, but then um you know, whatever company uh, we can do, you know, a coalition of small businesses that uh, come together to make this this island, this uh, this battle royale island happen. Um, I mean, I think I think it's a great fucking idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it would certainly certainly get a lot of uh, idiots out of the uh, uh, public circulation. Well, nobody would be, you know, nobody would be fighting. Uh, in the streets or on the internet, they'd just be fighting on on this little island. We'll call it uh, Save the Economy Island, something like that. Econo Island. Um, Economy. Yeah, you know, I mean, it just seems like a great idea. I had another great idea yesterday uh, that I think is also based entirely in reality. Um, what we'll do is, since we got to get rid of academia, right? Because like these colleges are just fucking terrible and responsible for why these riots and things are, are really happening. It's just like this horrible, woke, progressive, you know, nonsense. Um, what we'll do is we will completely take all, uh, all accreditation away from every college. And how do you get people on board with that, Matt? Do you know? Tell me. What you do is if you and this is law now if your university you got your degree from is no longer accredited you don't owe student loans anymore nice so that's what we do we go okay no more student debt but we just take accreditation away from every college that way they're no longer a college but no more student debt and no more colleges bam don't tell me that you know, I I can't bring people together, man. I can solve these problems, and then it's you're, you're, you are a new, you truly are a uniter, Brian. It's true. And then once they're debt free, I'm gonna put all those assholes on an island and bet on them fighting. <laughs> genius, genius, uh, Brian for emperor, I guess. That'd be pretty good for about like three fucking days, and then you know. I'd get stabbed and be like, et tu, Forne? <laughs> It'd be rough. But hey, it's been about an hour. You want to wind the show down? Sounds good to me, yeah. It's been a good, good enough show. Um, just um, some quick news. Mask um, Amidst Madness, still burning up the Amazon shards. Go buy it. Links in the description. Uh, our next book is one that Brian will be very excited to hear about, uh, Panic by Benjamin Welton. Nice collection of uh, his poetry, including works that have been published at Social Matter. I know, know a lot of you like Social Matter. It's no longer online, so these works are coming back. 
And it also means Ben will be coming on the show in about a week or two. Hell yeah. Which I know Bryden Bryden is super excited about that. Yeah. I mean, you sound sarcastic when you're saying it, but I mean, if anybody nah, listens to the show, they know just... I fucking love Benjamin Walton. I think he kicks ass. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a great guy. He's a great guest. The last time we had him on, the show ran for about three hours. So we're, I'm looking forward to that, too. Um, but, yeah, more information about Panic will be in our newsletter and, you know, on Twitter and shit. Just follow. We actually have a list of uh, all the books we have coming up, uh, confirmed books for this year and next year. The link to that will be in the description. So, uh, and, of course, you know, what he, you know what he should have done? Should have spelled oh. it Panic with a Q. And then, like, the cover can be all, like, graffiti, and then it can be by b Well. <laughs> I, I did see some absolutely hilarious graffiti uh, a couple days ago. I, I, I did send it to you. Someone spray-painted on a wall here. Uh, <laughs> Masturbation never breaks your heart. Albanians, not so stupid after all. Well, it's a nice, it's a nice uh, change, you know. I, you know, I, I, before I was here, I was in Greece. Uh, Athens is covered in just like anarchist Antifa graffiti because everyone there is like mentally thirteen years old. Or fucking all swastikas. The <laughs> uh, I'm sure suck. there are swastikas. I would be shocked if there were no swastikas, uh, but I didn't see any personally. But here in Albania, all the graffiti is like life affirming wisdom. Because life sucks so bad. It's like why the Jamaicans had to make reggae, you know. Reggae, reggae blows. Ah, uh, the police are a reggae band, and they're one of the best bands ever. So, yeah, it, you're proving my point. It took non-Jamaicans to make reggae listenable. Um, well, um, I don't know. Ska is is just reggae that white people made faster because they didn't understand it. Well, they're again proving my point. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, Lee Scratch Perry's pretty fucking good. Yeah, whatever. Uh, anyway, Brian, anything you want to plug? Uh, I wrote a book called Panic that's going to be coming out soon. Um, you did this joke last week. I know. I'm I'm running out of material. Um, uh, if you want to see Bryden give out his best material, it's on his DLive channel at dlive.tv slash Bryden. And then there's his website, brydenproctor.com, and his, uh, all his other stuff will be there as well if you want to follow him and, and uh, soak in his wisdom and uh, unite around uh, his uniting policies for a grand and glorious future. Go, go <laughs> check Bryden out. For a great future, great leader, Bryden. I, it'll be good because, like, you know, like I can't read. So, like, everything will just sound uh, like Mao translations, right? But it'll just be that I'm illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Mao himself could barely read, so you're following Well, I mean, who could fucking blame him? Have you seen Chinese? That's like, it didn't make any sense. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's not Chinese. We have Mandarin and Cantonese. And it's like, I don't know, fucking pick one. It's fucking, it's all kinds oh, of weird... You. Well, they pick Mandarin because it's the one that's easier. Well, they can't even, you know, I mean, they read all fucking up and down instead of, you know. I mean, give me a break. I don't know. I don't know if it has to do with their eyes or, you know, I, it's probably why they can't drive. Like, <laughs> like I just, they can't even, I, not, none of it makes any fucking sense to me. You know what? You know what language makes more sense? That's an Asian one? Fucking Korean. That's random. No, no, no. It's really not because, like, the way their uh, symbols and stuff are set up. It's just like l little different pieces, and I'll, if you look at them like faces or like little monsters, uh, it's easier to understand how you would, like how each of them makes each weird little sound. Um, now I can't speak a lick of fucking Korean, but I lived in Korea town for a while, and that's how I learned it from Korean people. Is they were like, uh, you know, look, it's like little faces, it's like little monsters. I'm like, oh, that makes so much more sense than bang tong, bang tong, bang tong, 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 tong. Because that's not the way the fucking Koreans sound. Koreans are just like, you know, you know, a little different than that. Not as tonal. Yeah, um, I Fuck learned China. something today. I learned something today. Um, um, I want to urge you to go and check out a couple of podcast appearances I did recently. I was on Alt-Right. That's uh, our eight 
W R I T E. Wow, you fucking you blew it. What? You blew it. I blew what? Trying to spell the word right. You were you wanted to make sure that people knew it didn't start with an R as in the direction right, but you were like, you know, you you let it up like you know, just so you know, I could feel you were pumped on it. You know, you were like, I'm going to nail this one. And then you went R and then your fucking heart sunk. You know, you knew you blew the fucking spelling bee just right then. <laughs> well, yeah, I appeared on Bibles, this podcast. There'll be a link to that. Go check it out. We talked about, we talked about lit stuff. I also appeared on Aricidal Tendencies, which is Eris's podcast. Go check that out. That was that was that one was a bit more freeform. We talked about like life affirming subjects like hitchhiking and threesomes and being pissed on. Uh, and of course, you can check me out at mattforney.com. and uh, my telegram is t.me slash mattforney. The YouTube, all that's in the description. And that'll do it for this episode of Terror House Radio. Be sure to check in every day at Terror House Magazine, terrorhousemag.com for all these publications. Check out our books at Terror House Press, terrorhousepress.com. Follow our social media links in the description, and don't forget that you can always check out past episodes of Terror House Radio at terrorhouseradio.com. Terror House Radio is produced by Broden Proctor and presented by Jugs. Intro music by Mimix Meme Extremist. Illegitimate non Carborundum. Don't the bastards find you down. I'm Matt Forney with Broden Proctor, and we are out.